Hello everyone and a big God bless you. Welcome back to another one of our podcasts. We are at number six of our series, Seven Principles of Blessing. And I pray that you have been making a note of these and really looking at them. And although we only touch on them, but for you to go and delve deeper and study, do a word study on these principles, because these are very powerful keys and principles of living a blessed life. Principle number six, just one word, humility. One of the keys to being blessed in this life is humility. Now, I know we're living in a world where you've <laughs> got to have swagger, you've got to have followers, you've got to have money, you've got to have ju- you've got to have all these kind of things, and that is the kind of environment that the world is actually cultivating and convincing people that this is what you need. But the Word of God differs. And the Word of God shows us that actually the principle to being blessed is humility. Don't take my word for it. Let us get into the Word of God. One of my favorite scriptures um, that you just cannot refute is 1 Peter Chapter 5, I'm going to read from verse 5 to verse 7. It says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. All of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Why? For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Proverbs 29 verse 23, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. I'm going to stop there. You know how serious that scripture is in 1 Peter chapter 5 when it says that God resists the proud? Do you know how serious that is? That's serious because we know what it's like. Another version of the scripture says God opposes the proud. Now it's one thing when you are being resisted by demons. It's one thing when Satan's resisting you and the enemy's resisting you and people are resisting you. But if God resists you, there is truly no hope. And the Bible says he does resist pride. He hates pride. Why? Because it was the very first sin. It was the very first appearance of sin. The Bible says Lucifer, this, 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 amazing creation that he had made for worship went into pride created started a war in heaven got kicked out but there are aspects of this story that we will never fully understand but one thing is is that pride reminds him of satan pride is one of those things and the bible says god wherever he sees it will resist it naomi had instructed ruth to lay at Boaz's feet. And I'm not sure that would happen today. Mm. I'm not sure. And that whole story actually with Ruth, uh, how Ruth has to really humble herself to be able to get by in that season for herself and Naomi. She was gathering food so that they could both eat together. But just that whole thing of sleep, who can't sleep at somebody's feet? That you don't know. Who can't sleep on somebody's feet? And I can, I can hear that attitude today. But actually, actually, when we do those things, when we are teachable, when we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and those that have gone before us, we come into blessings like Ruth came into that blessing, actually, of, uh, of a husband. And just the fact that we read of Ruth today in the word of God but it took something it took a strength of character there for her to be able to humble herself and says right okay well you know what 
No, no, I want that big piece of grain off there. No, 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 no. She couldn't. You off couldn't even floor. do. Couldn't even do that in that time anyway. So she. It was like actually, you know what? I just. This is what we need for now. This is what I'm, I'm going to take. And it's that thing of being able to humble ourselves. Scripture. Humble yourself under the, under the mighty, mighty hand of God, God and, and he, he will exalt, exalt you in due season. season. It's just the fact that Ruth, uh, in preparation for marriage, ha was humble, like you said, and spent all night at his feet. That's my position. That's a demonstration that this is who I am. It was demonstrating her character because he's thinking, my goodness, what kind of woman would just sleep at my feet? It, what kind of woman? The marrying kind. Because in our day and age, some people go like, Are you <laughs> Me? <laughs> you think it's me? By your foot? Mess up my weave? Mess up my outfit? You must be jo And you can see the head going, you must be joking if you think I'm going. And that's the reason why so many will never enter into certain blessings because you've got it twisted to think that Hollywood is the road to blessing rather than humility. Amen. <laughs> I'll let that go now. I'll let you move on to the next scripture then. So, but, it, but it's the truth that actually this humility it equals the blessing. It's if the it, door. It, 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 it's it, the door. You, you can't go through any other way to then to get to Ruth's blessing you, she had to walk that road, and it's the same with um, uh, Naaman. And I love this story because it really does make me laugh. So, uh, Naaman has leprosy, and he wants to be healed, um, and he has this high position, high-ranking position. Elisha didn't come out. So, first and foremost, Naaman's like, "What? You couldn't even come and see me yourself." And then he goes on to say, I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana and Farfa, better than any are in the rivers, any of the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned away and went away in rage. And we know the story. We know that actually, eventually, he does do what he needs to do. But again, this is the route. This is the way forward to God's blessing. There's not a side road. There's not a side There's door. There's not a trap door. There's not a back chimney. door. Chimney. <laughs> There's none of that. There Underground is tunnels. One way. <laughs> the door the door of humility amen amen and we have to we have to hear from god and we have to humble ourselves because god has your best interest at heart because he says it in the word that he has good plans for us amen he has good for us not evil that's what joseph said isn't it that's you know right. i know you um, meant it for evil but, but god, god meant, meant it for, for good. good so you know, when we read these stories, it's not just a point of going, oh, look, and, and Ruth got her, Ruth got her blessing, Ruth got her man. That's the only part that people read. <laughs> when people are ready, they say, yeah, I claim the blessing of Ruth, I claim the blessing of Esther, I am an Esther in my generation. Are you sure you're an Esther in your generation? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that the eunuch said to Esther, don't bother with all that fancy dress, just wear that plain Garment there. No, no, no. Uh, people did say, no, 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 but I want the tiara. I, I, want think, the, I think, I think this, <laughs> I think, let me have my nails done. Yeah. And people are stubborn. Also, you know, um, Esther could have turned around and said, hang on a minute. So all these women are lined up. You want me to be part of some kind of a, a pageant, you know, etc. And she, she could have, she could have had all kinds of attitude, but she simply humbled herself and did what the eunuch mm -hmm. instructed. You know, in fact, I'd like to throw out a challenge at this point. Come okay? on. Okay? I'll throw out a challenge. And you can email us and, and answer the challenge if you can. Show me one person in the word of God who came into blessing without humility. Just, just search through the Bible. It would be a nice exercise of Bible study for you. Show me one person who came into blessing without humility. Because 
whether it's people like King David who had to live as a dog in caves and on in the Philistines camp and pretend to be mad at some point, whether it was Jesus who was stripped naked on a cross, whether it was Joseph who was thrown into prison for something he didn't do, I could go on and I could go on, but the road and the testing ground and the proofing ground is always humility. And if you do find somebody who came into blessing without humility, let me know if they stayed there. <laughs> and you can do this in the comment section between the, between yourselves in there. You know, just have those conversations um, in that comment se section because I think it's really good when we can engage together. You know, humility is a key. Oh, it's a key. A key. It's a key. To your blessings. In, in, in these stories that we read, whether it's Naaman, whether it's Esther, we can see that there is a point where you have to put anything that you think that you've got up in here of knowing better than God, because that's what it's going to come down to. And, and be able to say, no, actually God knows best. And, and, and that also, you know, equates to the people that he, he's put around you. Definitely. You know, I always say this, people that have gone ahead, they know the path. <laughs> they, they, you know, it, it, they, they've walked the, a similar road. Might not be exactly the same, but they've walked a similar road. And they will have some nuggets for you to be able, like Naomi did to Ruth, Actually, you know what? Do this. Do this and you'll get your man. Would, would Ruth have gotten and navigated on familiar ground if it wasn't for the no. advice of no. Naomi? No. Would Esther have navigated to actually overcome and see the eventual destruction of Haman if it wasn't for Mordecai's intervention? Mm -hmm. Would David have continued to be this great king without Nathan? I mean, I really could go on. Look at Peter. Peter walked on water, but without the rebuke, constant rebuke of Jesus, you see. So it takes humility to be able to receive discipline and chastisement. Hebrews 12, verse 5 to 9 says, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure his di this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? In other words, the ability to humble yourself is something that you need for the journey because God will constantly be correcting you and he'll correct you through fathers, spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers. He will correct you through contemporaries. He will constantly be correcting you. And what I've noticed is that those who are proud and pompous, they hurt themselves in the end because sooner or later, they're given good advice, which they decide, I'm not going to take that. I don't need to listen to that. And they become a Vashti. Yeah. And the Vashtis of life always get bounced on the curb outside to That's make so room <laughs> yeah. to make room for the Esthers. The souls who wouldn't listen to Samuel's instruction, because I'm already a king, I don't have to listen to you. Eventually, like the Bible says, God resists the proud and God chose David. Don't let God choose somebody instead of you because of the state of pride. It is actually a stench in the nose of God. And he says, he turns his face away from it and it says that pride goes before destruction. So the key to blessing, the sixth key to blessing is humility. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he can lift you up and exalt you in due season. Amen.